Hey guys, so I'm back with another video. This is gonna be like a little bit of a different video. I'm just in my back bathroom right now. It's just my bathroom, um, but it's where I keep my makeup kit. It's where I keep my personal makeup, and it's also where I will do makeup if I happen to have a client come to me. It doesn't happen all the time, but on occasion it will. So I have a space. It's just like a lot of light. Um, it's really just a bathroom, but there's some extra space in it, and there's like a skylight, and um, the toilet, this is the most important thing, the toilet is in a separate room. So it doesn't feel like you're sitting in a bathroom. Um, so anyway, I'm just gonna show you guys my professional kit today. Um, sometimes people ask me, you know, what do you bring? What do you use? Um, and I'm gonna show you pretty much everything that I would bring. Keep in mind, my kids are around, so you might hear some, you know, disturbance in the background. Um, but I'm gonna show you pretty much everything that I might potentially bring. Sometimes I'll pare this kit down, like if I know exactly what I'm doing, like say it's one prom girl, or it's one person for, the, you know, they're going to a bat mitzvah, and I already know what their dress looks like, and I've already met them, and maybe I've even done their makeup before. So I'll have a pretty tight kit that day because there's just no need for me to bring like 20 foundations and all the eyeshadow colors I can think of because we've probably already talked about like what's gonna happen or even if we haven't talked about it, I know. Um, but if I'm going to like a photo shoot and I don't know who the subject is, I don't know what skin tone they have or what it's for, um, it could be a boudoir shoot, usually I'll know that in advance or it could be like a professional headshot. Um, so in that case, I'll bring really a lot of choices and especially I will bring foundations in a very wide range of shades and colors and finishes. I'll do that anyway, like for a wedding, because say you're doing like four or five girls, you know, they might have different kinds of skin, color, texture, tone. They might even have some different preferences. So you always want to have like everything that you need, but you also don't wanna bring more than you actually need because sometimes you spend so much time looking for stuff because you have such a mountain of stuff that you've unpacked. And once you get going, you're like, can't find anything you want. So it's like this fine line between bringing enough, but also not having too much stuff. So I'm gonna show you like what I use, what I like, what's been working for me, what's really tried and true and um, we'll go from there. So the first thing that I'm gonna show you is this is my Zuka case um, and it's, been through a lot. It's pretty beat up. Um, it served me very well. I'm not sure if I will repurchase it. I might switch to like a more traditional um, like like suitcase and have compartments in there. I just feel like I'm kind of evolving as like what I like to bring. This can store a lot, but it's also really, really heavy. Um, and that's kind of one of the drawbacks. Like, yeah, it's a great workout for your arms, but sometimes I'm just like, oh my God, it's so heavy on its own. And then you put makeup in and it really, really can weigh a lot. So this is what I'm using right now. And it opens and basically you have these um, compartments. You see stuff is like falling out. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unpack it and then I'm gonna show you like everything that I have inside. But the first thing I am just gonna unpack and show you guys, let me just zoom out so you can see everything. Um, this is basically my lash bag. I also keep in here like extras that I know I'm gonna need extra of. Um, disposable lash ones, you go through a lot of these. Um, I do a lot of individual lashes, and then I have um, just lashes kind of set. These are like a little more dramatic. I don't use these as much because they're just not my favorite. I go through these a lot. These are Ardell Demi Wispies. Um, I go through, these are the Foam Mink Wispies. These are really nice. You can see the ones that I really like, I buy multiples of. I go through a lot of these individuals. These are what I use a lot for people that are like, I don't know if I want false lashes, false lashes. And then I'll say, well, let's try these. Or like brides, it's really nice to use. Um, and I have some really nice ones. These are kind of special that I've had from like Mac. Somebody actually gave these to me. So these are a little bit sentimental, but if I was doing something um, super special, I would um, I would gladly use these. These have a little bit of like glitter on them. I don't know if you can see. Um, but most of the stuff I do, we're gonna use, you know, like, like a lash, like something like this, like a Demi Wispy. Not uber dramatic, but something um, that's definitely gonna show off the lashes. So I like to have those, you know, extra mascara. Um, always have a couple tubes of Great Lash. Yes, I use Great Lash in my kit because, um, what I always say, because people will say, oh, you use Great Lash, I'm surprised. Honestly, 
I use a disposable wand every time, so it's really, I just need something that's going to be black and it's gonna work on a variety of lash types because we have different lash types, just like we have different hair types. And I find great lash is just like universal. I've never had anybody um, get a, any kind of like irritation from it. And I'm going through a new tube pretty much every event or you know, like if I'm doing a lot of um, makeup one week, like easily in, in a week I'll go through a tube because you're like dipping your wand and taking it out so you do go through a lot more product. Um, and it also just, um, I'm always using a disposable wand, but you just want like a nice fresh mascara. So I use these because it's very cost effective and it does exactly what I need it to do and it's not like a fancy wand is gonna serve me because it's not going on the client anyway. So next on top, this actually is uh, pretty good timing, is skincare, etc. So I keep it pretty simple. Um, I always prep my skin or my client's skin with a micellar wipe. These are just easy to use. They come, you know, they're pre-moistened. You can wipe them down and then I'll kind of keep that in case I need to clean up under the eyes. So I go through a lot of these and then I'll usually bring like two moisturizer types. So I'll usually have like two moisturizers. This is the Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enriched Face Base. I love it and I tend to use this for pretty much everybody because even though it's very rich, it works really nicely for oily and dry skin alike. Um, and then I'll have something like this. This is a L'Oreal Hydrogenous one. I like it because it's a gel. Even though it says it's normal to dry skin, they do make a normal to oily one, which I also have. Um, which would be good for somebody who's got very oily skin, but I find this is fine for oily skin because it's a gel. The only issue I have ever had with it is that it's very fragranced. And um, this has a fragrance as well, but this one I find it's very fragranced. And um, I think one time I felt like it was irritating my client's eyes, so I usually don't use it. I just use this because the last thing I wanna do is cause any irritation. So that was just the one time. Um, but it's not a bad product. It's just too perfumed. They need to make one that doesn't have fragrance. Then I would totally love it because it actually it goes under makeup so, so nicely. So sometimes I'll just, you know, I'll ask my client, like, how does your skin behave? Are you easily irritated? And if somebody were to tell me, oh, yes, you know, I get blotchy and this and that, no, we'll stay away from that. But this one has been fine. And then eye cream. I use this oil. This is an Olay one right now. This is the Total Effects 7-in-1. It's okay. Okay, um, it's nothing special. I've gone through a few tubs of this and I'm almost done with this one. I have another one in my personal makeup drawer. Um, not the one I use at night, but the one I use in the morning under my makeup. It's fine, um, I might buy it again, I don't know. It's not like anything special. And then I'll also have a lip balm and then I also have a makeup primer. I just carry one really. Um, some, this is the Smashbox Original Photo Finish. This is the Smooth and Blur. This is really nice. Um, sometimes, I'll be honest, I don't even use primer. If I use this and I'm using a foundation that I'm layering and I'm gonna set really well, you don't always need primer. Um, if somebody has like a lot of texture um, or they tell me that like makeup just gets absorbed in my skin or it just slides off, then I might use it. But to be honest, I'm not a big primer person. Um, what I will use, let me see if I have it, is um, I'll use something like this as a primer. This one I'm almost out of, it's the Backlight Priming Filter by Becca. This is a beautiful, almost there, barely there, sort of like shimmery glow. This works really nicely. Um, and then they also make the First Light, which is also a really nice glowy primer. If somebody doesn't have super dry skin, you could probably just do this right from the micellar uh, wipe. The thing is, I don't wanna to put too many layers on their skin before we've gotten to makeup um, because sometimes you don't have time for it to sink in because you might only have like 30, 35 minutes to do an entire face, which sounds like a lot of time, but it's not if you're waiting 10 minutes for each layer to, to sink in, if you know what I mean. So I'll get their skin all prepped. I'll probably use this. This is probably what I'll go to. I'll probably not use the other primers unless um, I want something extra glowy. And then I'll let all of that kind of sink in while I do their eyes. I also will keep um, this Skin Refined Zone Treatment. This is a MAC product. Um, I usually use this on men. Like if a man um, is maybe getting photos done and he tends to get a little shiny, I'll take a foundation brush and I'll just kind of put this from his forehead, nose, and chin, like just in his T-zone, and that's really who gets, uh, who, who uses this, or gets this gets used on the most in my kit. 
Um, always like to have some eye makeup remover. Um, I always have like a little one that I can stick a Q-tip into and just kind of clean up the eye or clean up an eyeliner if I need to, like if I'm trying to sharpen the wing. Um, these are good because they're not oily. So even though at home at the end of the night, I always like to use an oily eye makeup remover. Um, in my kit, I keep these non-oily ones because they don't uh, create any mess. And if you're trying to clean up after, or even if you're gonna do their eye makeup right after, you don't want to have any kind of like oily residue. It's just like, it's just not a good thing. Okay, and then also in this kit, I keep pretty much everything prime related. So I'll keep a couple of MAC paint pots. Um, right now in here, I just have painterly groundwork. So I'm gonna show you guys these. This is like a light brown is groundwork. It looks really nice for like medium skin tones, darker skin tones, and fair skin tones if you're doing like a brown smoky eye. Painterly is good for fair people. This is a pinkier undertone. I used to also have soft ochre, which is like a more yellow undertone. I finished it, I didn't repurchase. Um, Indian wood is just like a really nice goldy color. Um, you can use it for multiple things, but if you want to start with a gold base, this is a really nice way to go. And then I also have this pinky base. This is a color tattoo Maybelline one, and this like a pinky base. These color tattoos are very similar to the paint pots. I find they work just as well, and they really bump up the um, eyeshadow if that's what you're looking for. Um, I have some other ones too, but the reason I don't, I keep them in my closet back there. Maybe I'll do a tour of that some other time, but these are really heavy. They're heavy, and I know I sound like I'm being a wimp, but if I were to stack 10 in here, uh, they would just be way too heavy. No, I don't want to carry that much makeup around. And I, in the past, I played with decanting them, and I'd like scrape some out, and I'd put it in a little tight jar, and I'd squeeze it tight, and you know, twist it tight, and they dried out. Invariably, they all dried out. So... For some reason, they just have to be in these glass containers that they come in. I've found um, they don't decant well. Some products will, some products won't. Let me know if you've had that problem. Um, and then I'm keeping in here, uh, let's see. Oh, look, I must have changed the, uh, the lid. Oh, look, I mixed it up. So I've got a black gel liner. This is the MAC one. And yeah, that's the top that goes on the MAC one. This is just black track. Is this black track? I believe it is. And um, black gel liner, nothing special. You can also put this over the lid if you're starting with a black base. Um, and then this is like a nice dark brown one. This is espresso. This is the L'Oreal Infallible one. Dare I say it, I think I like these better than the MAC ones. They also, they don't dry out as quickly. And the black track, it's not... It's not as black as I think I want it to be. Um, does anybody find that? It's almost like got a little bit of a greenness to it. It's not the blackest black. The L'Oreal Infallible one is a little bit blacker. Oh, I see what I did. I see what I did. I mixed the tops. I probably had them open and was like in a hurry as usual. This is the back brown one. This is dipped down. This is like a medium brown. I have a dark brown. And then I have my black L'Oreal Infallible one. This has kind of kicked the uh, MAC black track to the curb. So I'll always store them this way so that I know what I have. You know, if they're all black, I mean, what? I don't have time. I just want to look and see what the color is. Um, and then I'll also keep, this is the Urban Decay Eyeshadow Primer Potion. This is the Minor Sin. I like this one a lot. Um, this is the Lorac Eyeshadow Primer. This is an excellent one. And what I also like about this is it's the travel size. I used to have the large one. I think I used it all up. That's how good it was. Um, I love this. I also love the NARS one, but this is just the one I'm using at the moment. Nice and small, goes right in there, and it's light. Um, but it's great under eyeshadow. Um, what else? I think I've told you everything else. I have a random lip gloss in here. This is a goldy tone. This is called Very Go Lightly. It's a MAC one. It goes over most lipsticks really nice if you just want to add a little gold shimmer. Um, and then a mascara. So that's the same. Um, so my kit is in a little bit of like a sort of like a transition, shall I say. Um, so I've recently gotten into Graftobian products, like back, I was into them a few years ago, and I kind of like moved away. You know, there's just so many products to try. Um, so we're gonna go back to those in a second, but this is a lip uh, palette that I had made. This I made myself mostly with MAC lipsticks. Basically, you just like cut half the tube off in the lipstick bullet, you put it in a spoon, you put it over a candle, and you basically like freebase it, like I feel like I'm doing something wrong, and then you pour it into these little wells, and you make your own palette. And so I found like if there were like certain colors I was going through a lot, like you can see, um, I could just kind of refill them. And then here's another one. These are mostly matte lipsticks. Um, but you can see like a lot of the neutrals that 
I'm using. Um, you've got like a nice red here. Um, Mac Velvet Teddy, that's a popular one. But that way, these are just colors that I like and I know I'm gonna use and I have them kind of like at the ready. Um, and then when I first got into makeup, like basically when I was first into MAC and I was working it even, um, I purchased these four lip palettes and I think it was a really great purchase. I don't regret it at all. It got me through so many jobs. Um, they have a red palette. As you can see, they have more of like a wine palette. This is like the Bat Mitzvah Mom palette. I'm telling you, they always go for these colors. Um, and then this is like a red palette. I don't do a lot of red for events. You'd think that I would. Um, not quite. People, I think... Sometimes they think red is maybe gonna be a little too high maintenance, although once I did do an entire wedding party with uh, Ruby Woo. This one right here, Ruby Woo, beautiful red, and it was such a perfect color to use because um, it looks good on everybody. Anyway, I could talk to you for an hour about that. Um, these are some nice nude colors, and keep in mind some of these I've actually refilled. If I had, these are all colors that MAC makes, so if you get low in one, you can actually refill it, so that's pretty cool. And then here you have some pinks, and you can see like the kind of colors that I use because you can see what's most used up. Um, but I felt like I wanted like, a, you know, I wanted like a little refresher. So um, let's see, this is foundation. So I actually just treated myself to the Graftobian uh, lip palette. It's a beautiful palette. I really just started playing with it. I've only used it a handful of times. I haven't even tried every color. So far my experience is that the, um, the formula is not gonna be as long wearing as MAC, which kind of it bums me out because the colors are beautiful. But if you know MAC lipsticks, one of the reasons that I predominantly use MAC lipsticks is because they have amazing colors and the formula, especially like the satins and the mattes, they wear so well and so long. So I'm not sure, I can't say for sure, but just like feeling consistency, I feel like it's gonna slide off. So, oh well. And then in this uh, little pouch here, this actually, I got this tip from Scott Barnes recently. I used to keep them in like a Ziploc. Like, I used to keep all my pencils in a Ziploc. And he was showing us on Tati's video um, a pencil case. And I was like, I have one of those. Oh my God, Scott, you're so smart. I mean, come on. He's been doing makeup forever for like amazing people like Jennifer Lopez. Um, so the man knows what he's doing. But... Um, Thank you to Scott Barnes for simplifying, giving me such an easy, simple idea, but I didn't think of doing this before. Like I would keep my brows in here with some, with some brushes, but I always had my, my pencils, my eye pencils and my lip pencils like in a Ziploc bag. Why would I do that? Um, anyway, this is a way better system. I have all my brows here. These are all brows. These are mostly MAC and some others, just different shades, browns and blondes and darker ones. Like most people don't have black brows. You usually get like the darkest is like spiked or like stud by MAC. Those are really the darkest I ever need. Um, and then I have all my pencils. These are, um, I just have a black, two blacks over here. I have a dark brown. Um, and then these are some Bobbi Brown and some Laura Mercier shadow sticks. So if I want something a little shimmery or a little more colorful, I can go into here. But I don't carry a lot of um, eye pencil colors because I don't really use anything other than like black or brown, or um, sometimes I'll throw a gray in here or like a dark green that I have. Um, but most of the time, these are more than I need. And then these are all my lip pencils, pinks and nudes and reds and wines. That's like mostly what I use. I keep a lip gloss because I just came to the conclusion that I don't want to carry like 10 lip glosses with me. Um, it's basically the lipstick, the lip liner, and then I'll throw like a little glass on top if I need. And it's just like really simplified. And then what I'll do a lot of times is I'll give the client a lip gloss so they can just reapply their own lip gloss. Like I'll usually buy them like a, a MAC or like a Revlon or something like that. Revlon Super Lustrous are really fantastic. They make a color called Rosy Future and they make a color called Supernatural. And I give those to the prom girls all the time, um, just as like a little gift. And they always seem to really like it. And they're colors that they'll probably use. Um, and this is a, actually a NARS like lipstick pencil, but you could also use it to like shape the lips. 
So those are my pencils, and those are just sitting um, right with my lipsticks for now. Okay, so while I have them out, before we get on to like foundations and things, I am gonna show you, this is the Graftobian Foundation Kit. This is their HD foundation, and this is the Super Palette, which is supposed to be like suitable for every single person. Um, so you can like, you've got like your fair skins, your mediums, and your real like deep darks. I love this HD Glamour Cream formula. I love that it's compact. I love that it's saturated with color. It wears so wonderfully without looking like you're wearing a ton of foundation. It's fantastic. It photographs well. It's kind of like my new go-to. Now, while we're here, before I get on to my other foundations, I'm gonna open up, this has been a new little addition. So I carry this with me. It comes with me with my Zuka. And in the top part, I've got, um, we've got a contour palette. I've had this for a little while. I just started like using it a little bit more. I need to use it more. I've had it with me forever. I just, I don't know. Is, do I have something against Kat Von D? Absolutely not. I don't care about that controversy. Um, it's a good palette. I just, um, I don't know. I've gravitated towards other things. These are just some blushes that I use. These are the kinds of colors that I tend to use a lot of. Um, so I carry this in my kit. It gives me pretty much a wide variety. Sometimes I'll throw one of my NARS um, blush palettes in if I'm like, oh, I don't know. What if I want something brighter? Or if what if I want something like more red? You know, I feel like those unfiltered palettes they have are really, really fantastic. Then I have two setting powders. Um, this is the Fit Me. These are great. These are Maybelline Fit Me. They work fantastically. I have a Fenty one in Cashew. And then also, I want to bring this out since I was speaking of Graphobian. I recently ran through my Patrick Star set powder. Great powder but we're done and I've just replaced it with the Graftobian one. I've used this a couple of times, I love it. So this is gonna start coming with me. And then I also got, this is another Graftobian powder palette, which is probably gonna replace all the palettes, all the, sorry, the singles that I'm about to show you. And you can even use some of these colors for contour as well. I feel, I don't know if it's just me, but I feel like the trend now is moving towards like a warmer contour where it used to be like, oh, it has to be gray because it has to look like a shadow. That's kind of how I was always taught. But now I see people like Scott Barnes and like a lot of really beautiful um, makeup artists using contours that are a little bit warmer. And I feel like, I don't know, we're kind of bending the rules and I think it's okay. And I think that because this shade and light palette tends to be a little cooler, maybe that's why I just haven't felt like, oh, I have to use that one because that's the right contour color. All right, so let's zip this up. And then under here, I have some more goodies, not in any particular order. Um, but let me just show you what we've got. So when you open this up, I keep some extra brushes here, just like some backups if I feel like I haven't had time to clean the brushes and I'm doing a bunch of clients that day. And then I'm gonna show you like these compartments here. Um, these are, we've got concealers here. So I'm just gonna tilt this up so you can see. We've got like ColourPop, Becca, um, It Cosmetics, ouchie. Um, we've got Shape Tape, can you see all this? I don't know if I'm doing it justice, but I've got all these in different colors um, and different textures because, you know, like the ColourPop ones, those work great on like oily skin and like more um, in younger girls, but like women like me um, and even older women, I do a lot of older women, I do like grandmas. Um, ColourPop is, it's great, but it, it's not really great for a more mature uh, skin type. I'll be honest with you. It's a little, can be a little bit drying. Um, shape tape can be as well. Um, and so for that client, I'll use like the It Cosmetics Bye Bye Under Eye. This is way more emollient and I have this medium tone and I also have a much lighter tone in there. Also, this Becca one is a little more moisturizing. Also, like if I'm doing spot cover, I keep my MAC palettes in here. And also what I should point out is that Graftobian Super Palette that I showed you before, that you can also use as concealer because you can like use it full coverage or you can kind of um, blend it out into foundation. So it's very versatile. And then I also have these two Graftobian palettes, same HD cream formula. And um, I love them. And I love how like it's really compact. Like when I, mean, I show you my foundation bag and you, I show you how heavy it is, you're gonna not have any questions of why I don't wanna carry that much foundation anymore. So I try to really like simplify. 
Um, and then I showed you my blush palette, but then I also will keep like some extra. These are all matte blushes that I really like. You have peaches, you have mocha, and then you have uh, gingerly. These are just some nice blushes to have. Sometimes I'll throw in like a warm sole or something like that. Sun Bask is one that I like that I have in my palette, and that's like similar enough to warm sole that I don't feel like I need both. All right, oh my gosh, let's, let's pick this up. Um, this is a pinky highlighter by Bobbi Brown. It's got like, it's like one of those shimmer bricks. This is more of like a pinky undertone, great for fair skin. Um, and then for like medium and slightly deeper skin, I have this Becca one. It's like a more of a gold tone. So this doesn't look great on me because I have a pink undertone. You can see like my hands next to this, how pink they are. That tells you I have a pink undertone. Um, let's see, what else? And then another highlighter while we're here is the MAC Soft and Gentle. This is a nice like pinky tone too. Pretty similar to the Shimmer Brick. You can see we had an accident, but there's still actually a lot of product. These like domed products, they really go a long time. So it's okay. So these are kind of like a lot of cheek products in here. And then I think I have one more, maybe two more bags to show you. This is my eye bag in terms of eyeshadow and I often won't even bring that many palettes because I just simply don't need them. Um, once you kind of get your skills going, like you, you need less products or less products than you think you need. I used to carry everything and I would just end up bringing makeup and then bringing it home. So um, I'm just going to show you. I always like to keep a few of my favorite Anastasia palettes on me. Um, so I have Sultry, I have Modern Renaissance, I have Soft Glam. Truth be told, I could just bring like these three and just be done with it. But I think something in my head is like, no, you need to have more. Um, so I, I like to have this one. This is kind of like my, my universal MAC palette. I've got lots of nice basics in here. Um, some of these colors will double as brows as well. So I just did like a MAC eyeshadow video. I don't know if you checked that out, but that was up, I think, the last video that I posted. Um, some of these work great for brows. Um, the Naked palette, I repurchased this. This is my second one. It's now discontinued. This is great. You've got like some nice golds in here. This is great for proms and weddings. You've got a lot of shimmers and things like that. Um, just in case I want something a little more colorful, beautiful palette. This is the Huda palette. Um, but I'm telling you, most of the time, we're sticking to neutrals in the work that I do anyway. Um, and then here's some nice like shimmery tones, cooler tones. These are the Viseart ones, and these are just like a few matte colors. This would be great like if you have someone with really black hair. This is a really nice like inky, deep, deep, deep brown that um, goes nicely in the brows. So I keep that in there too. And then one more bag that I want to show you guys. So this is my foundation bag, and I'll tell you, I'm not usually bringing all of this at once because it's just so much. Oh my gosh, I have another foundation thing I forgot to show you while I was here. So I'm just gonna show you, um, I kind of was experimenting. I was like trying to figure out what's the best foundation, what do I want? And I really have come to the conclusion that the one I had probably been using the whole time and was working so well, which is the MAC Pro Longwear Foundation. This is a fantastic foundation for events and I find that it works really, really well on young and mature skin and it wears really well. It also mixes really nice with face and body. So the formulas blend well. So for now, I'm sticking to my Graftobian and my uh, MAC Pro Longwear. I also had gotten these. I thought that the um, these are great, like the packaging is great for travel because it's like plastic tubes, so it doesn't break. It's not like glass clunking together. But this is the Studio Sculpt. I don't have the best longevity with it. So these sometimes will come with me. This one mixes really nicely with these um, face and body. But these were like foundations that I purchased and I tended not to use a whole lot. So it's really the Pro Longwear that I love and it's also the Pro Longwear Nourishing Waterproof. This is also great for events. And then I also have this, um, this is a wonderful uh, Makeup Forever palette that I just got. Um, similar to the Graftobian, like it kind of, you use it the same way, you can kind of like custom blend a color. And this one, it's got a lot of deeper tones into it. So I feel like I could probably show up at a job and I could probably do any one with this. You can lighten it, you can deepen it, um, and then from there. So one other thing that I wanna show you guys that I have while we're out is um, I just have like some little extras in here that I'll keep. Um, this is like my little bag, so I keep 
cotton balls or cotton buds, they will say Q-tips. Um, and then I have like all my beauty blenders. These are the um, Real Technique ones. I have some extra lashes in here. I have these um, little, these like little eye rounds for taking off eye makeup. Um, I have these little cushions that I'll put here and I'll kind of rest my hand on the client's face to steady my hand and also as like a little cushion so I'm not like smushing my like fat sweaty hand against their face. And then um, what I do is I just wash them after and they work really well. And then I'll always have like a couple of these um, just like white um, square towels, just to like clean brushes or to put product down. And then I'll also usually bring like a large towel with me so that I can like lay all my stuff out and not like damage somebody's table or countertop or something like that or get any product there. So you guys, that is pretty much it. I hope you guys liked the video and I will see you in my next one.